Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Art 101. And today we're going to be working on the pigs. And the way I work, uh, I never teach off of anything that's a specific lesson plan. What I do is I teach off of work that comes into my gout and to my studio that has to be done. Okay. So you learn on things that actually are relevant toward whatever whatever is being sold that day. So you know it's current. The methods are current. Everything is kind of done. So that's what this is about. A lady's interested in this pig. One, this one, the original to this sold earlier. Uh, so I have to do another one as close as possible. Here's the painting that sold. Kind of tells you, as you can see right there, that's what this is going to be here. Okay. So there you go. You see my reference for lights and darks here. It's always taped. I always have it in one place, so I can always look. I don't have it moving around. I don't have it sitting here, over here. It's always in one place. That way, I'm guaranteed. I'm never going to get. If I'm trying to find a something here in the nose, it's here. But if it's down here, now I have to refocus on where that is. Now for this, I'm using. I'm not sure what the size of this brush is. It's kind of wiped out. So I'll figure out what that is. To let you know later. But it is a short filbert. It's made by Catalyst. The the brand is Princeton. And it's a poly tip, really good. Now, the way we load our brushes, first of all, we want to make sure the brush is wet. Okay, so you, you see how I kind of hammer that in? Hopefully you can. Okay, good. And you also see, let me see here. I'm going to turn this a little more. There we go. I can't get everything in there. Sorry, folks. I mean, I probably could if I went like something like this. Oh, there, we, okay, there we go. <laughs> got everything in there uh, it's gonna give you the idea how I work well anyway I use paper towels I don't use a palette I just have a bucket of water and I have the tube of paint now I go through stages now this also follows atmosphere under painting everything all in the same thing but previously what I did was I printed the transfer so I could transfer down the image because I don't want to muck around trying to draw this stuff out all the time the second thing I did is once I transferred it down I also went over it and drew out my pencil because if you can see real closely here there's you can see the transfer lines but they're almost gone so I want to have a little heavier uh, drawing in there so I went ahead and uh, put it went over and re-rendered over top of that to make sure I got what I want and that always changes so even if it's one way going here you render over top it's going to give you a different way so by the nature of transferring what happens is you're never going to get the exact image it's going to have a little more character because you're going to be in it so that's what I'm going to do there. Now another thing I do, once I got my brush, I get my brush wet, and you can hear me, I'm pounding that. And then I have my paper towels. I take off the excess water. I want my brush cool, but not dripping wet. I want my brush wet all the way to the ferrule, but I don't want it to be dry in there. That's the reason why I do that so many times. Now what I'm going to do is, the way I load my brush, I, always, I push out a little bit of paint. I load it to the tip of the brush. I do not load... I don't dip it in the paint or anything else like that. Okay, from there, I'm looking at all dark spots. So I'm coming here, I'm just gonna put it in. I wanna leave lots of white area because that white is gonna be very important. I'm gonna load my brush again. And if your brush is nice and wet, you're not gonna have to worry too much about that. So I'm gonna put that in. This here comes down that way. And I'm looking at my I'm looking at my reference. I've done these pigs so many times you would think I wouldn't have to. Okay. And some tension here maybe. I got here. I'm gonna put that there. I'm gonna come down here. And in the in the sketch, you see this bar coming across here, but that's gonna be grass down here, so I'm not too worried about it. So I'm gonna come here. And this is just the first color, this is the first of four colors I used for my underpaintings. Now, another way you can guarantee that whatever you do is consistent is you lay out five of these and you just walk down the line doing all of these. So I'm going to come here. Oh, I, I like that straight line on his head. It's kind of interesting. Um, and now, this is quinacridone Nicolaise of Gold, the only color I buy from Golden. So it gives you an idea that uh, when I'm using this color, you get like a burnt sienna effect like right here. You get a raw sienna effect right there. You kind of, kind of, a little bit of a yellow gold, which is kind of cool. And I will show you on some more formal pieces how this method keeps me consistent across the board. Okay. 
And notice I'm only putting this really heavily where there's the value system in the shadows. But there's little nuances, so the more you look at your drawing or your thing, you're going to start seeing things. Such as, you know, darker areas, lighter areas. Can't go wrong there on the nose. And the lighter you push that, I got some lighter values here that can actually be done. Okay, so I'm going to come this way, do that. So this should move pretty quick because you're using a large brush, you're using broad strokes, you're not trying to refine it. And typically what I teach is I want you to use a large brush first. Now how fast would that? Oh, hold on a second, I missed the part because I was talking and working at the same time, which is pretty traditional with me. This here and this here. Because the way light's hitting them, it's hitting them from this side, so I want more light on this part. You know, you can do this, you can darken it up a little bit and kind of really identify that. You can't mess this up because you're not there to mess this stage up. Basically what you're doing here is you just start applying color over color. Now I'm going to wait for that to dry. That'll take a couple minutes. And then I'll go into a phalo green. A phalo green is a recessive color. Now, uh, if we think about the way greens work in space, we think of the, re the recessed colors back. So cool colors draw things back, warm colors bring things forward. So this is kind of a mid-range, uh, it's sort of, wow, that's how good this works around here, okay? We got a little bit of wetness here, I'm just going to let it dry for a second. But we want to have kind of shadows laid in. Now I'm going to go even darker, I'm going to use a phalo green, and you're going to see how that impacts things. But I'm going to put this more in your darker areas, the shadow areas here, rather than um, just putting it everywhere, okay? And I do this because this adds tension, but I also have to add it in some areas that may not seem like it, but like, okay, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the eyes, okay? Now I'm working really thin, and since this is a, since this is a tub paint, I need to really control that. So if I come here, I'm gonna control the amount of paint I have on my brush by doing in areas that I know needs this, these darker areas, okay? I'm gonna come in here, recess that back here, okay? because the head comes forward and this drops back, okay? So, you know, even on areas that you think close, there's gonna be an area that drops back. I'm gonna come here to the shadow areas. I'm gonna drop that in there. Okay, I'm looking here. This comes back here and this actually drops back. That drops back. We come here. That's the furthest way of ways. So even on a shape that's closest to you, there's gonna be areas where you have to put it in. Okay, and I'm at a little bit of tension by using this. I'm gonna comb over this guy. Now where's the recessive parts? In the ear, underneath the ears. I'm gonna put that there. And I'm gonna put it top part because that's the furthest point away from us here. Of course, I'm gonna use my finger to control my values. You can kind of see a lighter, darker value here, lighter value here. So I'm gonna come in here and do this. And this comes back, so I'm gonna use a lighter value back there. And notice how I'm not really control, I'm controlling my stroke, but I'm not really trying to paint a line. So if you want to do this right, do it like this. Hold your brush here. It helps stops you from making those, spending so much time working in areas. And it's a good way of doing it. And of course, even in the light part, that drops back, right? And that part of that cheek is back there. So I can do that. So if I do this right here, in the dark areas, the shadow areas, it helps darken them up. I'm going to put that there. Put that here. I'm going to come to this one, of course, some areas. And even if you miss something on here, that does, that's not really going to be that bad. Because why? Because you're going to add to it later. So there I'm done with that color. Okay, I'm going to let that dry. Then i got to go to, I want to go to even a darker color, which will not have recessed things back. And that will be my, it will actually be, as soon as I can find it, I can use a purple, which is a lot of fun, because it adds some things. Or I can add, wow. I got a yellow, what have I got in there? Well, I got a, ooh, I got a persimmonum that I actually made up. I may just use that on this one, but I probably won't since I got to control the amount of paint that's on there. So right now, I'm going to use a, I'm going to use a Doxane Violet or Cabazola Doxane Violet from uh, Nova Color, which when you use their colors, you pretty much stop using golden and only because of the volume of paint you get. And I was thinking this was not going to be a good paint because 
you know, Dioxane Violet, this much is going to run you about 100 bucks if you get it by Golden. Uh, if you get it by Nova, I think it's like 48 something that effect. Okay, now, this right here, we run our hands over it. Pretty dry. So now I can come in here. I can use this color here. Look at that. You can replace all your blacks with this. I'll make sure my brush is dry. I'm going to use my paint here. I'm going to come in here, right there, do the nostril holes, which I typically do. I have a certain process I do with these guys. And I'm going to do that right there, that right there. I'm going to come into these recessed parts here. Now, as I'm trying to do this, I'm also watching the value of the paint on the brush. Because the lighter the value, I can come into some of these areas here. Okay, you can kind of see that. But I want to go lighter because I want to drop some of these shadows back. This adds a tension under the titanium white. Now, I will show you that. It probably won't be on this video, but it'll be on the next one. So I'm going to come here, tension, tension on these areas. I want to drop those things back and bring some things forward. Tension. And I'm actually, I can put this all in this shadow area. But notice it's broad strokes. I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to create anything at this point. All I'm trying to do is I'm just observing where the lights and darks are. I'm just observing where, you know, it, it's necessary to put these things in. Okay. Keep them in areas like these right here. That recesses back. So you can actually use that purple to help you draw these things back. Now, what are you seeing happen? It's getting darker, right? Well, when I put it, when I veil this back with the titanium white, you're going to understand why these work the way they do. Now, this, this paint is going to take a little while. Holy crap. That's drying nicely. I may be able to go into my red. You don't, want to, you don't want to contaminate the other colors. That's the reason why I like them to dry between. Now, I'm going to use a cad red light as soon as I find it. Okay, here we go. I mean, cad red light should have, uh, the color should have a, an almost an orange tint to it. It should not have a purple tint. The purple tint is not the right value. Now, I want you to notice also, the green, quinacrylum, everything, actually went in to this. Okay, into the same water. Same as this. I'm not going to worry so much about this. But where am I going to put this? I want to put this in areas where it comes forward. So anywhere on these guys right here, I don't want to put in. I know there's going to be light areas and dark areas in the in the nose in the ears because these are not flat surfaces. I'm going to put it here. I'm going to put it here. I want to put it here. Anywhere that kind of comes forward, and then I'm going to start looking for little nuances because you want to keep your color even all the way across there. You do not want your color. Um, you do not want your color to uh, opaque. So if I do that, if I do the nose first, and I come here to the nose. Here, that comes forward because the head rounds out. I'm going to put it here, here, here. Now, this is the quick and dirty of this, okay? So, folks, when you're looking at this, it's like, holy crap. But you're going to see what I mean when I veil this back. And by veiling means I'm going to go over this with titanium white. Okay. I dropped in the orbs with dark. You can kind of see this kind of abstract pig here going on, can't you? Okay. So, I'm not going to be, I don't want to be too careful with the paint. Because I'm going to cut this stuff in. This is also why we still want to see our sketch through there. Now, how fast was that? That was pretty fast, right? Okay, now, you have to trust me that it's going to go from this to this. Okay? And how do we know this? Because I've got some already previously done to that stage. Okay? Where I've done all that work. And whether it's this pig or any others... My process still follows the same principle, okay? So here's a few that have been bailed back, okay? Now, I still got a lot of work left on these, so when these get to this stage, I'll be laying those out. So there you go. So all this work here is veiled back with titanium white. And once it's veiled back with titanium white, then I can start the other colors. And sometimes what I'll do, I'll put a yellow on here, I'll use a teal, I'll use all these other colors, but for the most part... And now I'm not going to concentrate too much. All I'm doing is feeling like that wet. If it's wet, I'm not going to work on this because I do not want the titanium white to be contaminated with this purple. You can see right there, that's not going to hurt anything because it's going to go behind the titanium white. And I don't want these colors hidden either. I want them to build up slowly. So my first coat is really thin in titanium white. I also need clean water. I can't do this with dirty water. So I'm just going to rinse out the bucket and the brushes so that everything... 
it's going to be clean. And all I'm doing right now is I'm just filling the, rinsing out the brushes and clear, filling it out. There's a very specific way I clean my brushes. So I, if you saw any of my videos previously, you see that. Okay. It's still, it's still got, no, I'm not seeing anything. So that's pretty dry. I live down here in Arizona, so, you know, it's kind of that way. So now what I'm going to do, this is where I still want to use that broad brush. So you can see that was one, two, three, let me see, uh, one, two, three, four colors. So I got four colors on there, and that's actually good. So I'm going to take that bigger brush, and all I want to do so I'm going to take that titanium white, and I can actually go back in areas that, that require it to draw back. And once I do that, then I can come in here, and I'm going to just scrub it on there a little bit. I don't want to cause a direction yet. I want it to have some feeling. But you can see I'm not trying to hide, you know, I'll come here, square off the eyes. I'm not trying to hide those colors. I just want to bail them back a little bit for the moment. Now, even if this goes dark over here, I still want to do this first because it ties everything in. See that, how it contaminated that color? That red wasn't quite dry, but that's okay. I'm just going to do it anyway. It's going to give it kind of a, peach, a pinky feel, which is okay. here here it kind of comes down like this we've got this one here now what did you see happen if anything you started seeing the pig come to shape didn't you okay so I'm gonna come here I'm gonna come all the way down here and notice I haven't dealt with anything in the background but I want you to notice that all this color kind of comes above it, doesn't it? Okay. And I'm looking at my I'm looking at my uh, reference real heavily when I'm doing this. Okay. I don't want to. I just want to put. I'm going to put that in here. These a lot of these questions will answer themselves once you get in, once you get into the next set of colors. And I'm gonna do this a little bit here, so that's there. And all I'm doing is I'm just veiling that back for my next set of colors. So just keep that in mind. And I'm using my hand to kind of control those values. And notice I'm still doing this with one brush. I don't want any other brushes. I do not want to concentrate on detail. And I don't want to contrast I don't want to concentrate on anything more than that. And this is exactly how I've always done all my pigs. I'm going to come make sure your brush is always wet. Do not let it dry out or you'll be repairing brushes. And we'll be doing video. I'll be doing brush care and maintenance on this too, so you'll be able to see that. Okay. So, so 
So just by that application of titanium white, you start kind of seeing the pigs come forward a little bit, don't you? So over the course of the years, I've had to, I've had to change my methodology with these guys a little bit. But the end result is still the same. There. I'm going to do that. I'm just going to lighten that up a little bit. Come down here. Put that in. And some of these things will, will change over time. The other times they will just stay. So anyway, I really have to let this dry because I've got to go back in later and work with them. So I'm going to stop here. I hope you enjoyed this. This is about 20 minutes into this, so this will take a while to upload. I hope you enjoyed this process. This is our 101, the beginning process. So you saw a little bit about a quick underpainting. You saw a little bit about underlaying colors, what happens when you veil them back uh, with titanium white, how you still see the color, but it starts giving the, the subject shape. And this is a blunt instrument, so you can do this with anything. You can make it subtle later. You can do this in subtle ways, but this right here gives you a really good idea what happens when you underlay a bunch of variety of colors, leaving some of the white showing through, but then you can see what happens when I veil it back. They start jumping into shape just by this stage alone. So anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed. Something to think about. Have a good day. I will do video two here probably a little bit later.